I'm going to grab me some solar lights. Next, head over to the hardware store. I'm going to grab me about 100 feet of nylon rope. First thing I got to do is blow up this dollar beach ball. Then I got to get out some Portland cement. Make sure it's not concrete, but cement. Take a little bucket and you're going to pour some water in first so it doesn't stick to the bottom. Add that cement as much as you can. Then if it gets a little too thick, add some more water, but you keep stirring. You want it actually really thin, a lot thinner than it would if it was pudding, because we need to coat that rope. Go ahead and mix it all up, and once you do, take that first bit of rope and put it in there. Make sure you're wearing some gloves, and just soak it up. If it gets a little bit too lumpy, go ahead and add some more water. Now, on that beach ball, just start laying that rope. You're just going to start roping it all the way around. It's going to be a little bit of a messy job, but it's going to be worth it. Just keep wrapping that rope all over. When you get to the beginning of that rope, make sure you got it all covered up so that it holds it in place. Again, just keep that cement going and just keep running all over that ball. You're going to keep going all the way around until you got a pretty good amount around it. Once you get to the end, what you're going to do is tuck that last bit in underneath the rope. It's going to hold it in place. Then what we can do is move on to possibly adding a little bit more cement. Again, I mixed some more water with it and used a brush. Make sure you cover all that rope. We want it to stiffen up as best we can. Go ahead and get it all on there. We're going to let it sit for a couple hours once we get it covered. Once it's covered, take a knife and just puncture the beach ball. It only cost me a dollar, so it was fine. Once we get it all the air out, just go ahead and pull it through one of the bigger openings between the ropes. Just pull it all the way out, and then you've got this wonderful string orb. Now, I want to clean it up. Took a little bit of a plastic fork and just clean up the edges. Don't want anything flaking off. Now, let me show you a secret. Take a squirt bottle and start squirting all the string, and you're just going to powder it with the cement. Just keep doing that all over. Spray it on with water and then put some more cement on. What this does is make it thicker and strengthen it up. Just keep doing this over and over until you get the right thickness. Once you get it all wet up and thickness out, we're gonna grab that dollar light again. Now it's solar powered, so no need to worry about a switch. Take out the bottom part. You're gonna turn it around, put it in, and that's what's gonna stick into the ground. Go ahead and put it right into the ground, right in the area you wanna put it, and then you're gonna take your string orb and you're gonna put it right over the light, right in the middle, and lay it on down. Get it positioned exactly where you want it. Once it's in place, it just looks really good. Just sitting there. It's waterproof because it's on the nylon rope and it's made out of cement. But once night comes, look at it light up. It is amazing to see from your yard and from the street. I hope this inspired you to build your own string light cement orb. Take a paper towel and spray it with cooking spray. Take this paper towel and rub it around your container or molds. Take your powdered cement or plaster and put it off to the side. Take just about two to three cups of water, put it into your bowl before you go and add any sort of dye or pigment to this. You're going to want to make sure you have extra water that is dyed off to the side so you can mix it in just in case you need it. Powdered pigment is best to use since the color will be more vibrant and as your stepping stone fully sets, the color will become brighter. Add pigment into your water and mix it. I added just about a tablespoon of pigment into my water since the powdered dye that I am using is very, very vibrant when it dries. Let the powder fully dissolve and fully mix it in. You also probably want to mix a couple extra cups of water, just have it off to the side or have extra water ready to roll just in case. Slowly add water into your powder mixture. Check the packaging for details on water ratio. Keep in mind quickery along with also concretes like that normally measure in actual weight in comparison to cups or any sort of measurement like that. It can be kind of hard to determine exactly how much water you should be adding, but the consistency for both plaster and also quickery or concrete would be very similar. Make sure to wear gloves when you're doing this and also be in a very well ventilated area. You want the consistency to be pancake batter like. So not very liquidy, but it should also still have some texture to it, but not be really, really solid or have large clumps. As you can see in this video, this is the consistency of what it should look like for both plaster along with also quickery. Once your quickery or plaster is fully mixed, scoop some into your mold and spread it around with your hand. Of course, do this with a gloved hand. 
Fill the container to about the half inch mark or higher. You don't want it thinner than just about half of an inch if you're going to actually step on these. Once you have it filled to your liking, tap your container a few times to flatten the mixture and take out extra air bubbles. After the mixture has sat in the mold for just about five minutes, take a doily and center it and press it down lightly. Use your gloved fingertips to press lightly along with also spread it out a bit. Wait the proper amount of time for this to set. It takes about 30 minutes for plaster to set and it takes about 30 to 40 minutes for quick read to set, but not for it to fully set and fully dry. Pull the sides of your mold slowly to release the stepping stone. Flip the container upside down and hold the stepping stone in place. It will slowly release. To remove the doily, pull up on one end and slowly start peeling it up. Definitely go slow so you don't break anything or you don't rip the doily. You can take the doily and clean it and actually use it as a coaster as long as you used a die that was fabric safe. After your stepping stone is fully dry, which can take up to 48 hours, bring it outside and line them up. You may notice that the color has brightened up. Please note Portland cement can support a lot more weight than plaster can. If you are making plaster stepping stones, you're going to want to make sure that you seal them and also use them more so for decoration in comparison to going and stepping on them. Cut each of the roses with a pair of pliers and leave just about three to four inches of stem. The metal might be a bit hard to cut through, so go slow. Make sure to save the stems, you can always use them for other projects. Especially if they do have leaves, because those are really great for making wreaths or other projects as well. Grab a bowl and pour in two cups of quick wreath. It is important to start off with dry materials and then add water. Since this concrete is fast acting, it is best to get your space up and running before you pour in the water to activate it. Prep your area and put down something that will not absorb the concrete when you place the flowers down. Add in a cup of water to your dry mix. Pour it in slowly and do this in a well-ventilated area because some of the powder might start to get into the air and you definitely do not want to breathe that in. After you have the full cup of water in, begin to mix it. You can do this with a gloved hand and you definitely want to make sure that you are wearing gloves when you're doing this activity. Once everything is fully mixed, swirl one of your roses around. Make sure to get your flower fully covered with the concrete. Use your hands to massage the concrete into the petals along with also separate them. Spread the petals open and help get the concrete dispersed. This rose is ready to be flipped upside down and ready for it to go and set. Spread the petals of your flower out a bit and flip the flower upside down. Let the flower fully dry. It should take about just about 20 to 30 minutes, or it might be a little bit different depending on the mix that you're using. Once it is fully dry, slowly remove it from the surface. Go slow since these will be pretty delicate. Mix up a small batch of concrete, just about half of a cup of powder, and enough water to make it spreadable. Use an old paintbrush that you really do not care about and mix up the concrete. Once all of the lumps are out, start painting it onto your flowers. Cover up any red that you may see or any of the fabric that just didn't get covered up from before. Go slow, take your time, the flowers are a bit delicate now. It will take about another 20 to 30 minutes for the concrete to fully set. Once they are dry, begin to paint them. It is best to do this outside. You could use spray paint as the base, or you could use acrylic paint as the base. I chose to use acrylic paint as the base just because I wanted to give it a little bit more of depth. If you choose to use acrylic paint, start off with a base color like red, pink, yellow, or what a typical rose would be colored. Add in a little bit of shadow with a darker color, and follow where the separation of the petals are. Make sure to blend the colors a little bit with a smaller brush. Add a lighter tone to the outside of the petals, by lightly brushing it onto the sides. And don't forget the middle. Add a little bit of white or a lighter color to really make it pop. Once your paint is fully dry, use a clear coat. Rest the flower on cardboard and begin to spray. If you pick up the flower doll to spray the inside and other sides, make sure to wear a glove. Spray all of your flowers and put them off to the side to dry. Once they are dry, pick out the perfect place in your flower garden to put them. 
I chose a small bed of flowers that just started blooming. When putting your roses into the ground, go slow. They can still be a bit fragile. Thank you for watching. Happy spring. I'll see you next time. Bye!